Hi guys, hope you are safe at your home. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 has been called a variant of concern by WHO based on the evidence that it has several mutations which can be related to higher infectivity. Today, I am going to tell you a few important facts based on the latest information from extremely variable resources. Omicron was first identified in an African country called Botswana earlier in November. It was reported to World Health Organization from South Africa on 24th of November 2021. By the 29th of November, it had spread to more than 30 countries. In India, it emerged first time in Karnataka where two cases were detected on 2nd of December 2021. Now, Omicron has spread to majority of nations on the world map. South Africa, United Kingdom and Denmark are the worst hit. Everyone knows that the Omicron spread is very fast. But how fast? According to South African data, the speed of transmission is three times faster than the previous Delta wave. The doubling time is 1.5 days, which means that the number of cases become double in just one and a half days. Are the symptoms different compared to previous wave of COVID? Not entirely but you would see a higher grade of fever which may be resistant to usual doses of antipyretics and also a higher incidence of headache and diarrhea. We are awaiting more data on the symptomatology of Omicron soon. Now next question people might ask about its severity. What is the risk of hospitalization? What is the risk of mortality? Well, in Nature, on 17th of December 2021, this was the article published, reports from South Africa have consistently noted a lower rate of hospitalization as a result of Omicron infections compared with the infections caused by the previous variants. This study from South Africa published just a week back showed that the death and ICU admissions were 4 to 5 times lower compared to the previous wave. The death rate which you can see in this table from the same study was 4.5% versus 21.3% and ICU admission rate was 1% versus 4.3% in the previous wave. Similarly, the hospital length of stay was 4 days versus 8.8 .8 days. That means that the stay in the hospital was just half of the previous wave and that is a great, and that is a great finding which means more money is uh, saved is spent on hospitalization and early recovery. Another interesting finding from this study was the lower mean age of uh, those Omicron affected patients. They were 10 years younger compared to the previous wave cohort, 39 years versus 49 years. So these are quite a few crucial pieces of information that I wanted everyone to know. But remember the fact that mortality or ICU admissions are not zero. However, the risk of death or hospitalization was higher in patients who were older than 60 years or having a significant comorbid illness such as diabetes, COPD or chronic kidney disease and also the male sex. There is another article published in the last week in JAMA which also suggested similar findings with younger patients having fewer comorbidities, fewer hospitalizations and fewer respiratory diagnosis and a decrease in the severity and mortality. The median age at hospitalization was just 36 years in this study and the death rate was 2.7%. Does the prior vaccination status matter? Well, WHO says that so far it looks like that the currently available vaccine offers significant protection against the severe disease and death. According to JAMA article, further research is required to determine if the differences between the waves are affected by the pre-existing acquired or natural immunity or if Omicron may be less pathogenic than previous variants. If someone has contracted COVID-19 and thinks that he or she will never be infected again, it is a myth. And the fact is that the chances to get reinfected with Omicron is still there or even higher. I will present an evidence here. In a retrospective analysis of routine epidemiological surveillance data suggests that Omicron variant may be associated with an increase in the risk of reinfection after a primary infection. So beware and get your booster of vaccination immediately. 
does medical management change certainly not the medical management of covid 19 cases is not expected to change and remains the same uh, with this variant oxygen therapy associated with corticosteroids will likely remain the mainstay of therapy and the targeted anti-inflammatory drugs such as IL-6 inhibitors or JAK inhibitors may be useful in the most of the severe cases. Now, the most important question of the century, when will this covid end? For a short while this year, researchers were optimistic that the pandemic might end at the end of 2022, but that is not the case. So that means that keep yourself safe and follow the COVID appropriate behaviors. Take your own responsibility. Governments are doing a very good job to manufacture vaccines and improve coverage. And that's all for today. We'll update you with more facts in the coming days. Thank you so much. Bye bye.